So we're going to be talking about the four lepers. And so turn in your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse 1. And we're talking about, here it's talking about Elisha. And who was Elisha? Elisha was the prophet. He was, he was a man of God who washed the feet of Elijah. And washing his feet, I thank God. I mentioned that on Wednesday for people who wash my feet, who serve me. Thank God for, for Pastor Joyce. She washes my feet all the time. You say, what do you mean wash? She serves me. And so he, he, Elisha uh, uh, served Elijah. And then what happened when Elijah went up to heaven on the chariot, what happened? The mantle fell and he received a double portion anointing. Don't you want as much anointing from God as you can possibly get? A amen. Praise God. And you get it from God. And what happened, they were having a great famine in the land at the time. They were having a great famine in the land, land at the time. And Elisha replied, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. So Elijah comes before the king and he's telling him, hey, uh, this is what, hear the word of the Lord. Don't you want to hear the word of the Lord? And I, that's what we just pray, that you would hear the word of the Lord today for you. And this is what the Lord says. At this time tomorrow, a say, and a say was a measure of, of wheat. It was 12 pounds. Uh, the finest flour will sell for a shekel and, and two shades of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So what he was saying there, uh, so one ounce, like I told you uh, earlier, that one ounce of silver goes for how much today? About $30. And a shekel was two-fifths of an ounce of silver. And, that, uh, um, and so uh, 12 pounds of flour, that would buy you t uh, uh, 12 pounds of flour for $10. So when you go to the grocery store, and that's what I'm saying, you're believing God. So what Elijah was prophesying the end of the famine, that you could go to the grocery store, you could go and buy 15 loaves of bread for $10. Now, can you go to, even in our time, can you go to the grocery store and buy 15 loaves of bread for $10? I, maybe you haven't gone, I haven't gone, but I know you can't do that. You can't do that even with the Giant Eagle, Shop and Save, or wherever, you, uh, a Walmart, whatever. So he was saying, you're going to have plenty. I'm prophesying, you're going to have plenty. Say, I'm going to have plenty. Amen. You're going to have plenty. You're going to have blessings of God in your life. Okay. And then the officer on whose arm the king was leaning on said to the man of God, look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of heaven, could this happen? You see with your own eyes, answered Elisha, but you will not eat any of it. You, you know, the Bible says in 1 Chronicles 16, verse 22, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. So we shouldn't speak against men of God, and I encourage people a lot of times not to speak anything negative against me. Remember what happened in another story. The teenagers s said to Elijah, go back, you bald head. Go back, you bald head. And then what happened? The Bible says two she-bears came out of the woods and devoured them. Okay? And then so these teenagers just didn't get it in their own head to mistreat the man of God. They got it from their parents. They got it from their parents, and it's really important that we instill that to our kids or, or, and, our, and our, our children's children, to touch not God's anointed. But you know what? Even if somebody touches me as a minister, as a pastor, guess what? That doesn't change anything. I'm still a man of God, whether they treat me right or whether they treat me wrong. And the same thing, you as a Christian. How many Christians we got? People here living for Jesus today. Amen. If so, so if somebody mistreats you, you still hold your peace, and you walk as a Christian. And don't get out of character. Amen? Don't get out of character. If somebody, what do you say? If somebody cusses you out. Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me. It's happened to me as a preacher. What did I do? Nothing. Nothing. Just pray for them. I'm going to stay a man of God. I'm going to stay a Christian. I encourage you, you stay a Christian. If somebody cuts you off when you're driving home from church this morning, <laughs> you stay a Christian. Amen? And if somebody does you wrong, you just need to pray for them. What? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those, what? Who trespass against us. So stay, stay, that's what I'm, stay where you are. Amen? And now, are you anointed? Are you anointed? Yeah, if you're not anointed, you need to get anointed and we can pray for you. Amen. To get saved, to get filled with the Holy Spirit, have the blessing of God on your life. Yes, you're, I, I believe you are. 
Amen. And you can be baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And we can pray for you. All right, let's get back to the story. So that now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. Now, lepers, you, you know, uh, 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 have things wrong with them, right? Sometimes they might lose a finger or something at the time. And lepers, there wasn't any cure for leprosy. Now there is a cure for leprosy. There's medicine for that. And, and praise God. And they said to each other, but they were supposed to stay away from people. They were outcasts. Okay, and they're outside the city, entrance of the city gate. And what they were doing, they were begging, probably for money or for whatever, or food. And things were, were, were rough. And they weren't getting any food. And they weren't getting any money. And they said, why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there, and, and we will die. If we stay here, we will die. So let us go to the camp of Arameans and surrender. And if they spare us, we live, uh, 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 they will kill us, and then we die. So what happened is this city was being besieged at the time. Therefore, no, no, uh, uh, no supplies were coming into the city, and the, and the Arameans were, were uh, attacked the city. So these lepers, four lepers, decided to do something. I want to encourage you, to church, today that we need to do something. You need to hear from heaven, and you need to do what God's called you to do. You need to hear from heaven and do what God's called you to do. James 1.22 says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So faith does something. Faith does something. And I praise God, we got faith people here. Amen. This morning. And faith does something. And faith is an act. Faith is not just something that you have in your heart, and you don't act on it. No, faith is an act. And you go ahead and do something. I'm believing that our church is going to grow. So we need to, we need to spread the gospel with other, with other people. And spreading the gospel is not just uh, uh, you looking nice at work. Okay? Spreading the gospel. I mean, praise God, you look nice at work. But there's something. But if you have that opportunity and you're led by the Holy Spirit and they say something is different about you. What is so different about you? Then, it, then it's time that you need to tell them it's Jesus. Amen. Then it says, how blessed are, are the feet of them that bring the gospel of peace. And you need to tell other people about uh, uh, Jesus. And people should see that there's something different about you. Amen. When you're at work or wherever you go. Amen. When I was in work, when I took my break, when I had a break or something, when the, when the, uh, when the break was over, I went back to work. When it was time to show up at the work, and I didn't lollygag for a whole hour. I remember when I worked in West Philly, people would come in, eat their cookies, and drink their coffee for a whole hour. Okay? When they were supposed to be working. Amen. I right, come back over here. Nothing wrong with eating a cookie. I enjoy a cookie here as your pastor, but I'm working, and I drink my coffee. Hello? Or whatever. I haven't drank a cup of coffee in probably months but praise God God is good so what do we need to do faith is an act faith does something amen faith gives God something to work with so these lepers decided to get up and do something so they gave God something to work with and a leper represents well uh, you might you might say what does that represent it represents that we're not perfect do we have any perfect people here this morning if we do come down and pray for me <laughs> <laughs> Come down and pray for me. Uh, okay? But praise God. We're in Christ, and we're perfect in Christ. Uh, okay? And at dusk they got up, and they went to the camp of the Arameans. And, and they reached the edge of the camp, and no one was there. For the Lord had caused the Arameans to hear the sound of, the, of chariots and horses and a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittite, an Egyptian king, to attack us. And they got up and fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys. And they left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. So these four lepers are walking to the camp and God magnified it. And they said, run, run for your lives, run. When these four lepers came into the camp and they got up and left. See, God can use anybody. See, God can use me. And God can use you, and he wants to use you. And, and listen, church, we are the army of the Lord. 
We're in the army of the Lord. We used to sing that, that, that song with the little kids all the time. We're in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry. What? Fly, uh, ride in the cavalry. Fly over the enemy. I may never shoot the artillery, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. And then that's what we say to the Lord, too. When he tells us to do something, what do we say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My dad kind of ingrained that into me. <laughs> He, he was a sergeant in the, in, the, uh, in the Navy, and he was a sergeant in the Air Force, and that's what you said. You said what? Yes, sir. And we, we need to learn it. You said, well, I wasn't, wasn't raised that way. Well, we're in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. He is Lord. He's, that means he's boss. Amen. Amen. And we're going to do what he says. Holla, and we're in his army. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to do what he wants. Uh, praise God. The Lord just move them on. I'm going to go there. Say, go there, Pastor. Uh, so if, the Lord, if you're living for the Lord you, uh, and, and you need to be living for the Lord, don't do what the world does. Hello? I understand people need to take, sometimes take that medical marijuana for, for pain and stuff like that instead of taking Oxycontin and everything like that. But listen, if you're living for the Lord and the Lord's speaking in your heart, he doesn't want you to be getting high on marijuana. He didn't want you to be getting high. The preacher said that yesterday. He, he doesn't want you to go out and getting drunk every day. That's not having Jesus Lord of your life. Thank you for the, all his aim. Thank you for amen to me, Joyous. <laughs> hey, amen. What, what Lord means what? He's the boss. Amen. He's the boss. Who's the boss? Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the boss. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Now, uh, God did a miracle when they got moving. Amen. When he's a miracle worker. Joyce was sing singing this morning that he's a miracle worker. Say, he's a miracle worker. Amen. And, and, and God will do a miracle when you get moving. When you get moving with what? With him. We get moving with him. Hey, praise God. And, and Mark chapter 5 verse 36 says, Be not afraid. Only believe. And 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. So in verse 8, get back to the story. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp and entered one of the tents and they ate and drank. And they took silver and gold and clothes and went off and hid them. They're like, woohoo! We hit the jackpot. And they returned and entered another tent and took some of the things from, from it and hid them also. And then, then they said to each other, we're... What we're doing is not right. This is a day of good news, and we're keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until the daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let us go at once and report this to the royal palace. Okay, so they had to what? They had to forget what is behind and press toward the market to prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. They had to forget what's behind and press forward. Listen, church, we all have to forget what's behind. We have to forget our past failures, our past mistakes, our past hurts, and sometimes even our past victories. And we just got to keep on going forward. Amen. And uh, Philippians 3 verse 13 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth under those things which are before. So d don't let your shortcomings stop you, you from God using you. Amen. He said, well, God, used, uh, I tried before and it didn't work. Well, you can try again and God will help you. Hallelujah. And you can do it. Amen. So you, you got to step out in faith like Peter did when Jesus called him. You got to step out. And he said, Lord, if it's you, I'll come. He said, come and you can walk on the water. You can do the supernatural. You can do things that, that maybe you didn't think you'd be doing. I never thought I'd be a preacher. When I was growing up. But God called me a preacher. I remember when I got in front of people. I was scared. Really scared. My knees were started knocking and everything. I mean just really nervous. Really really nervous. But praise God. With God all things are possible. Amen. I remember that. Remember you had to get up in English class. Or something like that. That was the day you sweated a whole lot. <laughs> and you put on extra deodorant. And cologne and everything. 
he, you know, and he got up there and you're like, uh-huh. and the teacher's like, go ahead. I'm like, oh. <laughs> With God, you can do all things. Amen. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say it when we say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So it says here, and then they went out and called to, out to the city gatekeeper and told them, we went to the Aramean camp and there, no one was there, and not a sound of anyone, only tethered horses. Look at that, they had horses, tethered. That means they had saddles and bridles on them and everything, and donkeys in the tents left just as they were. See, the wicked flees when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. And we can be as bold as a lion, not arrogant, not brash, but you can be as bold as a lion. And the wicked flee. The enemy will flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. And how are we made righteous? By the blood of Jesus. And this was the Assyrian Empire, which is modern-day Syria. That's where they were. And the gatekeepers shouted the, the news. That's where, where they were from. And, and, and they shouted the news, and it was reported within the palace. But they were in, actually in the land of Israel. They were being, being attacked. And the king got up in the night and said to his officers, I will tell you what the Arameans have done to us. They, they know we are starving, so they left the camp to hide in the countryside, thinking they will surely come out, and then we will take them alive and, and get into the city. And one of his officers answered, Have some men take five horses, and they left in the city, and their plight will be like that of the Israelites left here. Yes, they will only be like these Israelites who are doomed. So let us send them to find out what happened. So they selected two chariots with their horses. And the king sent them after the Aramean army. And he commanded the drivers, go and find out what has happened. And they followed them as far as the Jordan. And that was the boundary line. And they found the whole road strewn with clothing and equipment. The Arameans had thrown away in their headlong flight. So the messengers returned and reported to the king, and the people went out and then plundered the camp of the Arameans. So everybody ran out of the city and, and went there, and they plundered. And so a seth of, of the finest flowers sold for a shekel, and two says for a, a barley sold for a, sh a shekel, as the Lord had said, as God spoke through Elijah the prophet. Now the king had put the officer on whose arm he leaned in charge of the gate. And the people trampled him in the gateway, and he died, just as the man of God had foretold when the king came down to his house. <clears throat> so the man who scorned it said, oh, that'll never happen. That came out of his own mouth, and what he confessed is what he possessed. He got exactly what he said. So we want to speak words of life and not of death. And it happened as the man of God had said to the king about this time, Tomorrow, a say of the finest flour will sell for a shekel and two shays for a barley of a shekel at the gate. And that was to two-fifths uh, uh, of an ounce of silver. And the officer said to the man of God, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of heaven, could this happen? And the man of God replied, You will see it with your own eyes, but you will not eat any of it. And this is exactly what happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gateway and he died. See, God is able. Say it when we say, God is able. He's able. God is able. He's able to do great things. Praise God. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus came that we might have life, and that we might have life what? More abundantly. So that you would have life and have it more abundantly. So there's another story I wanted to tell this morning, and then we'll stop after that. It's about Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehoshaphat was in the southern kingdom, okay? And there was the northern kingdom where Elijah and Elisha were from the northern kingdom of Israel. And, and, and Jehoshaphat was from the southern kingdom. But, and he was surrounded by a great army, and he was greatly outnumbered. And the whole reason why he was surrounded with the army, he made an alliance with Ahab, the, the king of the northern kingdom. And so he made an alliance with him, and then they had to go and fight because they made an alliance. 
In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 14, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mattiah, Mataniah, a Levite, the descendant of Asaph. And he stood in the assembly. So Jehaziel was a prophet. And he said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Church, there's some things that you're going through. The battle is not yours, but it's God's. Amen. So if it's God's battle, who's going to show up? God. God is going to show up. The battle is not yours, but God's. That means, I mean, you're in the battle, but God's showing up with you because you're with God. Amen. It, it, praise God. And, he's, so, and he says, do not be afraid or discouraged of this va vast army. For the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow march down against them. And they will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. Jeruel and you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So if, who would want you to be discouraged? The devil, the devil. And the devil would try to bring discouragement to you. Don't listen to the devil. Amen. Don't listen to that discouragement. Listen to what the words that God says. Amen. This morning. Praise God. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. When you go to work tomorrow, the Lord will be with you. Amen. And even if you have to go to work today, the Lord will be with you. Or whatever you say, well, I don't have necessarily have a job. Everybody, listen, everybody's got a job. Even if you don't have a job. You're like, I got a job. You, that means God has given you something to do. And you need to do it. You need to do it. You say, I don't know what it is. Then you better pray and listen to what God tells you to do. And go ahead and do it. Amen. Don't be afraid or discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow. Pastor Mark's got a fella. Uh, he said, Brother Self in his church. He's, he's a fella. He's 90 years old. He's 90. Pastor Mark gets together with him about once a week. And I think he used to be a preacher. And, and he says, and this Brother Self, he goes witnessing every day. And I think Pastor Mark meets him at Starbucks or someplace like that just to have a cup of coffee with him. He says he encourages Pastor Mark because he's always winning people to the Lord. And he says when they're in Starbucks, I guess because he's 90 years old, he just walks around and talks to everybody <laughs> in Starbucks about Jesus and nobody bothers him. Nobody says, hey, old man, why don't you shut up? No, he just goes, here's a track. Do you know Jesus? Are you saved? Are you born again? And he gets people saved every day. Amen. Praise God. Now, technically, he's retired. Right? Technically. I, I think he re might have retired. I don't know when he was 65 or 70. But guess what? We're not retired until when? Until we go through those pearly gates. A amen. Then we're retired. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, you will not have to fight in this battle. Take up your position, stand form, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed, bowed down his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down and worshiped before the Lord. Then some of the Levites and the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up and, and praised the Lord God of Israel. With a very loud voice. That's what, that's what David said when, when he was facing Goliath. He said, the Lord, the, the whole world will know that, 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 that our God is the God of Israel. Amen. Our God is God. Amen. And early in the morning they left out the desert of Tokia and they set out Jehoshaphat and stood. Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah. And people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. That's why I've, I've been praying for years that our presidents of our nation would get up and say, have faith in the Lord your God. Amen. Wouldn't that be awesome? That's, that, that's what it's talking He's the king. Amen. Have faith in the Lord your God. Have faith in Jesus. 
Amen. And, and, and you will be with, uh, with upheld. Have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. And consulting with the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. And as they went out ahead of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Uh, uh, another verse that says, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Isn't God, God is what? Good. Say it with me. Say, God is good. And he's good to me. Say, God is good all the time. Amen. And, and, and they began to sing and praise the Lord and set ambushments against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah. And they were defeated. And so the Lord sent ambushments. The Lord sent angels. Praise God. Amen. And sometimes you think you're all by yourself. Well, you're going to work. And angels are being with you. Amen. Angels are being with you. God is protecting you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, this week, I, I, I was up in my office. You know, I have those weird steps that come down in my office and everything. And then all of a sudden, I fell, but I didn't fell, fall. Like, what are you talking about? I didn't fall. And I was supposed to fall. So who caught me? The Lord! God caught me. I didn't break, twist, or break my ankle or anything. I know sometimes we fall and we do twist and break, break our ankles and stuff like that. But praise God, sometimes we don't. And isn't that good? For he shall command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Amen. And he will look out for you. And they began to sing and praise the Lord. The Lord set ambushments against the Moab, the men of Moab and Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir and invaded Judah and they were defeated. And the Ammonites and the Moabites rose up against the men of Seir and destroyed and annihilated them. They started fighting amongst themselves. Hello? That sounds like the world. They set a trap for others and then they fall in the trap. They send in uh, uh, their own trap that they set up. It says that in Proverbs chapter 1. And the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked down toward the vast arm, and he saw only dead bodies lying on the ground, and no one had escaped. See, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. It's not by our might. It's not by our power. But it's by the Holy Spirit says the Lord. Amen. So I want to encourage you as I'm closing here this morning, keep on believing. How many believers we got here this morning? How many believers? Keep on believing. Don't quit believing. You just keep on believing. Enter your promised land. All that God has for you. Move with the Spirit of God. Go ahead and move. Amen, with the Spirit of God. And when the Holy Spirit tells you not to do something, I, I was going to go on a trip this day, and I was praying. I was praying all week about whether or not this trip, and I wasn't sure. And I felt the Lord said, no, don't go on the trip. Don't go on the trip. Because there might be something wrong. It might be danger on this trip. And they're supposed to be having all these storms that we're supposed to be driving into uh, uh, lower Ohio, and all the storms are coming. It's supposed to storm for six hours. I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to do what you said. I'm going to move with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. I remember one time me and Joyous, Belinda, Joyous and Faith, we were planning on going to Oklahoma, and there was a storm all the way from Tulsa all the way here to Pittsburgh. The storm was already here in Pittsburgh. And the Lord said, hey, don't go on that trip. And guess what? We're still here. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We just had a little car at the time, front wheel drive. Not a whole lot of tires and stuff like that. I was like, okay. We need to move with the Spirit of the Lord. But when God says move, you, you move. You, you go ahead and do what he told you to do. Praise God. And don't stay. I'm talking about spiritually. Don't stay where you are. We want to continue to go up higher. Go up higher. Go up higher. Go up higher. Sometimes we get satisfied just where we are. But, but no, God wants us to continue to press forward. Keep, keep on learning. Keep on growing. Amen. And not, don't just stay where you are. I've been reading that book by Rick Renner, Unlikely. And how he said how God picks the unlikely people. 
And he was saying himself, it's an a autobiography about himself. And, and, and he'll pick the unlikely people that God will use. But I was unlikely to read. This book is a thousand pages long. How many of you ever read uh, Moby Dick? You ever read Moby Dick? Uh, I'm the only one in the room. <laughs> you know why? It's about, oh, there, there, there. It's, it's, about, it's about a thousand pages. Any of you ever read War and Peace? War and Peace, I think that's 1,500 pages. I decided not to read that one. <laughs> Guess it. Man, we got to go up higher. Continue to press forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We got a lot of wonderful books back in our Christian bookstore. Praise God. I encourage you to go back there and read those books. Amen. Grow in Christ. If you miss a sermon, you can always get a CD, buy a CD back there for only $3. Amen. Or you can listen to it or podcasts on the internet. See, so why am I saying that? So you continue to grow. Grow in Christ. Amen. Don't stay where you are. Amen. I, I, I wish I, I, you know, looking back in high school, I wish I read more books and prayed more and sought after God more. I, they would have gave me an office in that high school. Amen. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the principal goes up to Ava or Marissa and say, hey, you want an office in our school? And wouldn't that be wonderful if they're so full of the wisdom of God? See, I thought I couldn't make money until I, until I became an adult. That's not true. And I, actually, I, I, that, that my, my thinking did change when, when I was younger, when I was 14, 15, 16 years old. I was like, hey, I can make some. I had my own little lawnmower business. I had two riding lawnmowers. Can, can you ride two riding lawnmowers at the same time? No, no, I, I, I tried it. <laughs> I was a teenage boy. <laughs> Guess what? It doesn't work. <laughs> so I had to have another worker working for me. Amen. I had two trim, trim, trim mowers, too. I had weed whackers. Remember those weed whackers back in the day? Those side journey? They were electric ones. They didn't have the gas-powered ones. And you had to have that extension cord that was about a mile long. <laughs> and then before that, they had those little hand thingies. You had to go like this. To go, ch 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 I mean, remember, maybe your grandpa had one of those or something. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Don't stay where you are. That's what I'm talking about. Don't stay where you are. Amen. We, I don't still have those old International Harvester Cub Cadet lawnmowers. They're probably in some junk field. <laughs> Hello? We, we have to continue to go forward. Use whatever you've got in your hand. Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And you have to take steps of faith. Take steps of faith. To, or another way of saying it is steps of victory. Amen. Take steps of victory. And I've shared this before, many uh, before. If you don't have a savings account, you need to get one. If you don't have a check, I remember the first time I got a checking account. I'm, I'm reminiscing a whole lot this morning. Guess who the first check I ever wrote out was to? I, to God. I wrote my first check I ever wrote when I got a checkbook was to Kenneth E. Hagan. My first check. My very first check. I said I want to dedicate my money to God. I want to write my first check to Brother Hagan. Praise God. Isn't God good? Amen. Praise God. Do you take steps of faith? Take steps of victory. Uh, it, it would be like one of our teenagers getting a checkbook and writing their first check out to Pittsburgh Christian Fellowship. Woo! Amen. I go to the bank with them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, Romans 8, 31 says, What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57 says, But thanks be to God, which gives the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I've got the victory. Do you have the victory this morning? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Uh, remember that song? I've got the victory. You've got the victory. We've all got the victory now. I've got the victory, you've got the victory, we've all got the victory now. 
Jesus' name is spoken, my sin, my, my sin and chains are broken. I've got the victory now, 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 now. I've got the victory. You've got the victory. We've all got the victory now. Amen. And when we've got the victory, amen, in Jesus, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, amen. This bless you today. Did anybody need prayer? Anybody in particular need prayer here this morning? All right, come on down quickly, quickly, praise God, hallelujah.